Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're gonna to talk about creating new types of models. So this shocked me a little bit, and I was kind of taken back, and I wasn't quite sure how to respond to this, but during my tour here, when I was traveling around the country talking to universities and students as well, which was a complete blast, I love talking to students and figuring out what's going on with everybody. Uh, the question was asked, Dimitri, you know, basically how often is it that you create like a new type of model? Like, you know, a completely new, like idea here, like, you know, OLS, logistic, whatever, like you come up with some type of model here. And so I talked about, well, I had a, I mean, once in my career, I've had some sort of methodology, which I've done at a bank. Uh, and it was a new type of methodology I've never seen done. And, you know, they explained a little bit of details around it. Anyways, I've never published a paper on it. I've never written anything on it. I've never talked about it. And most banks have people doing really creative things and we just don't have time to do it. So we don't write papers. Um, but realistically, like it's not novel or new. I've just never seen it done. And it still depends on all the other current methodologies here. And so I think there might be some sort of misconception of people thinking like quant squat and create new models. Like you learn these really basic tools and then like, I don't know, like logistic regression, OLS, uh, Surrey Max models, um, I don't know, fill in the blank, GBMs, neural nets, convolution neural nets, I don't know, any type of model here. And somehow you go out and you create like a new type of model. Um, it just doesn't happen, guys. And I think part of this probably is from the fact that you've just taken too many finance courses. Um, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. But I find the finance community and even the data science community, and this is something that rubs me the wrong way with both of them, especially on the trading side. Uh, you take things that are already existence, like you take a linear model, and then you relabel parts of it something else. So for example, I have people talk about factor investing. And I start asking about factors. I go, you mean an OLS regression? They said, no, no, no. It's a regression with factors. Now, there are technically supposed to be conditions met to be considered a factor. And I've never seen one actually talk about this anywhere. But the point being is it's finance just relabeled it into something else. And like when you look at even like the traditional factors of like big and small um, and like the growth versus the value stocks and all that, uh, the Fama French model, that's what I'm getting at here. Uh, when you start talking about these, it's not a new model, it's just regression. They just found some variables that worked well at the time. Now, in that case, if you define that as a model, we create new models every single day. Uh, every day we go to work, I build a new model for the banking side, for the investing side, for anything you want to build a model for. Every day you go to build it, it is going to be a new model. And it's going to work for some time and it's eventually going to fail. And often we have common frameworks that we use because they just work really well instead of reinventing the wheel. So I talk about this a little bit with model selection. Uh, there are common models that the industry uses to model this, like fill in the blank here. So I work a lot with credit modeling, whether it's credit card mortgage or auto, we use logistic regression and gradient boosting decision trees for almost everything. Like That's just the go-to tool, predicting probabilities from zero to one. That's the tool you're gonna use here. Now, I've seen people do weird things like use OLS and there are cases for doing it, even though it's not bounded. But in general, no, you don't really create a lot of new models. And this leads me to talk about um, research in general. So the finance community, people ask me, like, Dimitri, don't you read a lot of research? And the answer is no, I don't. I don't find much research of value. So most stuff that's published by graduate students, so PhDs, uh, most papers even published by industry practitioners, even well-known famous people, 99.9% .9 of all the papers that are published are just complete nonsensical garbage. And they're just like one-off anecdotal scenarios here. And unfortunately, the academic community as a whole, I think has fallen way off the wayside in the fact that you have to generate so many PhDs per year. They have to come up with topics. They have to publish these papers. Uh, these journals also want to continue publishing articles. And so instead of being super, super, super like stringent and rigorous and thinking, is this paper going to have groundbreaking implications for the industry? Instead, what we end up doing is we just allow people to publish papers for the sake of publishing papers. And I don't think that's a very good thing to do. And unfortunately, it's not a good use of my time or probably most people's time to read these nonsensical papers. So in general, no, I don't see a lot of new shocking research. There aren't really new models or valuations. Many of the models that we're using are extremely old and people now equate that to being outdated and whatever. Uh, even machine learning as itself is like 50 plus years old on almost everything that's being done. Now, yes, there are new methodologies. There are things that have come out in the last couple of years, but in general, everything we do builds on everything else. So you can label 
things differently and you can add on little nuanced details like I've done with some things throughout my career. But in general, uh, no, I've really, to be honest with you, never really seen anybody come up with a new model structure, like a new actual type of model. So it just doesn't happen. It's If you could do it in a career, you'd be mind blown, but you'd be a statistician or a mathematician, uh, probably in academia. You probably wouldn't be a practitioner. Um, and even if you were, you probably would be spending most of your time doing actual research, not actually working in a business. So anyways, those are my two cents. Uh, hopefully that answers a little bit of it for you guys. Provide a little clarity. No, it is not common to ever come up with a new modeling structure. Anyways, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And as always, until next time.